You are tuned into Hello Nerds with your hosts. Direct from fighting Heartless off with his keyblade. Garrick. From his studies at the Dojo of the Samurai Champion. Jesus. From a Dungeons and Dragons game in a galaxy far, far away. James. Sit back and enjoy the madness. This is Hello Nerds. Happening, y'all. How y'all doing? Welcome in episode 13. You got my boy right here, Mr. G. We're waiting on Jesus to pop in, but we're gonna get the show started, man. We've wait, been waiting like half an hour for this dude already. Yes, we so have. If he pops in, he's just gonna hop in and miss some, miss some picks. Love How about it. that? It's his turn as many times as we skip if he does. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome in. My name is James. You got G Prez over there, Mr. G, Mr. Garrick, whatever you want to call him. Uh, just don't call him late for supper yeah, or uh, a sh- San Diego Charger tryout. Um, <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny. All right. So tonight we have, uh, as always, we are doing a top five of uh, some of our favorite things. Uh, This week's top five, we are dedicating ourselves. Last week, we dedicated ourselves to the weapons. This week, we're dedicating ourselves to those vehicles. Uh, Now, we're going to be talking vehicles from all types of pop culture, comic books, movies, TV series. I know that there's even a novel in here that I'm going to be talking about, Mm -hmm. Um, but we are going to be hitting it down the list. We both have our five, and if Jesus hops in, we'll just give him some floor to speak on his top five. Sound fair? Fair enough. Fair enough. Like I said, if you're not liking this so far, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube if you're watching. If you're not hit the follow button on Spotify or iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. It helps us out tremendously and it costs you nothing. Uh, so it also, if you would like to shop for you while supporting this channel, you can go to hello nerds.com triple L triple O. We say that cause there's three of us normally, um, <laughs> But you can go to hellonerds.com and shop for yourself while you support our channel. Also, you can scroll down and check out some of our past videos as podcasts, uh, some information about us. So go check that stuff out and uh, enjoy. So today's top five, we are jumping into some vehicles. And I know that I'm first and we're going to be doing some pop culture vehicles. This came up because of a... uh, a little bit of an argument last week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, me, you, and Jesus had a difference of opinion on what a weapon was. And uh, one thing you guys were considering a weapon, or one thing you were considering a weapon, really wasn't a weapon. It was a vehicle. It is a weapon, clearly a weapon. You ask anybody with a brain cell, they would tell you that that is a weapon. Apparently we don't have brain cells because we have both said it. we both said that it wasn't. It was two against one, so majority wins. No, bitch. that's not how that's not how it works, James. That's <laughs> how the world works, bitch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but today we are going to be discussing some vehicles because we now know what vehicles are. <laughs> uh, so. We are we going to do as always. We have our top five, and then we're going to jump right into some questions and some uh, controversial topics, and we'll see what we can get into. Um, we've also have a, li- a top one hundred list that we're going to go down and see if we anything sticks out to us. Uh, we both have been looking at it. Um, so let's start us off. I've got this week's uh, starting, and I'm going to start off with number five. And number five uh, is kind of one of my favorite Disney movies. Uh, I I love Pirates of the Caribbean, and the Black Pearl is just the most pristine ship that I think 
Stained. It's it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It it may be haunted, but and filled with holes, but it's iconic. It's pristine. There's always some shit going down with the Black Pearl. So somebody's either wants it. There's always some crazy backstory with it, and it always looks nasty. Right. So like you can't deny the iconicness of the Black Pearl. I mean, even when it was on. Uh, I think it was in number two where Jack was crazy and seeing multiple of himself. Yeah. Uh, he was on the sand and all those rocks were trying to move the pearl for him. And that was like one of my favorite scenes of all time. Um, but uh, I, Black Pearl, I would love to take a ride on it, honestly. I know it's really? a real ship. Uh, it's actually a real ship that they had at Gasparilla in Tampa that they were given rides on. I wish I was there for one Gasparilla. Uh, that, that's so fire. The, the um, Black Pearl. That's so did, Black did, Pearl. Did, did you see any of the, did you seen all these movies in theaters? I, I didn't know. Oh, yeah. All, every one of them I went to the theater and seen. And then, like, uh, I didn't see the last one in theaters, honestly. The one about the mermaids with um, the dude that plays Robin, Will Turner's son. I, I, I watched that one. Uh, on DVD when it came out. But yeah. the Black Pearl is my number five. That's a good one, and that's a very unexpected, honestly. I didn't expect you to go down that route. Well, my number five is... If you say some damn weapon, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> every, every, all of mine could be arguably be a weapon because they have guns attached to them. But my number five is the Batmobile from Batman the Animated Series. That's, that's a good now, one. this from the animated from the animated series. It's specific to animated yeah, series. Exactly, exactly. This vehicle to me was sleek. Oh yeah, it looked it badass. It, to me, it's the epitome of what I wish a live action Batmobile would look like because it's literally intimidating and Lord knows how it made turns, but who gives a damn? It looked it just looked amazing. I honestly the. The sleek, it was like built like a bullet, like the smooth. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I remember like the Joker even being scared of the Batmobile when yeah. it was pulling up. Like it's it's that symbol of fear for a lot of Gotham. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, they tried to perfect it in the movies, but they never really could. I don't think they had as of yet. I mean, I think Tim Burton's original one, uh, kind of was, yeah, close that was the closest like, one to the animated. I think uh what was it Kilmer's he that one was pretty close. The fins and stuff was yeah, you know, yeah it went a little actual with the fins and stuff. So yeah, I agree. I mean, I think the animated series has the best one. I think that um the animated series was the best Batman there was. So. Oh, absolutely. It's still hands down it's the to me it's the most badass Batman series/ slash media in general that's ever been put out i don't know about media in general well, and then i'm talking about batman media in general. oh okay batman name, i'm about to say yeah. name name a name a better media media median that batman's appeared in that was better than batman anime series um there is nothing i can't, I can't. <laughs> because the, the animated series is the only thing that i really truly cared for batman in. and then it ran so long so you fall in love with oh, yeah. those characters and it you know it had, it had repeated shows like the adventures of batman and robin you know what i mean so it's like i don't know kevin conroy became like the batman in my eyes he still is the batman r.i.p kevin conroy yes he is the the batman and in, in multiple people's eyes and i agree with that uh yeah so that batmobile like i said i've never been the biggest batman fan but at the same time you can't argue with the, the results that's that's an iconic vehicle right there yeah, uh many try to imitate it never duplicated nope. so yeah that's a good one My number five number four I'm going Final Fantasy, mm. and uh, my Chocobo is mm. my number four. Is, is, that, is that the yellow bird? It's the yellow bird. Ah, that's hilarious. Uh, so, like, 
even I think they're even in uh, Kingdom Hearts at one point in time, like where they were doing races and stuff like that. Uh, but I love the Chocobo. I think the Chocobo is so cool, and I, that's probably the only time you'll ever hear me say something's cool from Kingdom Hearts. Um, Final Fantasy <laughs> asshole. <laughs> but that, that, that's, I mean, honestly, I don't know much about Final Fantasy, but I know Cloud, I know Sephiroth, I I know uh, Sip, Sip, what was it, Tifa? Yep, Tifa. And, and Barrett, is it Barrett? Barrett. Yeah, Barrett. That's as far as I go. But based on looks, I know the bird just based on the name. When somebody says the name, I'm like, oh, that's the, the Chocobo. Bird. It's iconic, bro. Like, everybody knows. If if you know what a chocobo is looks like, or if you think of Final Fantasy in any way, the yellow bird that looks like an ostrich that runs it looks like a, it looks like a, a little baby chick that they grew, that blew up and made them see. right. Like they use the honey, I shrunk the kids machine on it. And I only say the baby <laughs> chick because it's so adorable. Like it, looks it like is, a, it looks like an adorable bird. <laughs> I love it, and I think like. I whip, I wanted a chocobo when I was a kid. You know, I would growing definitely up. take one of those. I, I'd be like riding on it, be like, yeah, Bro, <laughs> that would be dope. I loved that it. Like that good. was something I I wanted as a kid when I played Final Fantasy. Like, I think it was even in Final Fantasy three with the Moogles, which are mm. weird characters themselves. Uh, yeah. So no, my number four is the chocobo. It's a good one. Okay, that's a good one. My number four is going to be the Megazord. The Megazord is on could be on several lists. It could be on the weapon list. It could be on the vehicle list. It could be it's a robot. But when you when the thing when the vehicles come together. And they build that Megazord, and they start putting robot foot in your ass. I'm sorry. Are you saying the Megazord is a vehicle? I'm saying it is several vehicles combining together to become a weapon. Of... It's a vehicle. No, it's a weapon. It's a vehicle. It's a weapon. It's a weapon. We're not going to do this again. It's a <laughs> vehicle. It's both. <laughs> It's like a tank, yes. It's a vehicle. Exactly. It's okay. It's much of a vehicle as a fucking tank. That makes sense. A tank is a vehicle, yes. And it's also a weapon. It's a tank. It's, it's a vehicle. It's also a weapon. It's also it's a, a weapon. weapon. It's a vehicle first. <laughs> but anyways, the Megazord, the original Megazord from uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, is the most iconic one with the uh, fins on his ears and looks like a samurai. Yeah. That one is the best Megazord, and it's I- it's kind of like nostalgic when you think about it like you had voltron but like at the same time voltron was cool but i think the megazord was a little bit better for like fandom wise yeah i agree and, and um, like i said it, it's so it was so iconic just to look because like everybody grew up with it over like all like several seasons but they 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 redone the megazord well they've done the zords they've done several zords obviously but the fact that the Megazord from MNPR is the most iconic and it's the oh, first yeah. one. Like, when you think of a Megazord, you're like, okay, MNPR. Hey. And, uh, I mean, when you think of the Power Rangers, that's one of the top things you think of. Like, yeah. they, you have all these Power Rangers. You have the space version and the mm-hmm. dinosaur version and the car version. And guess what they all made? They all made a Megazord. So... I think you froze, homie. We're going to pause this for a second. Uh, you we're there? Back. I've been here. I ain't gone nowhere. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> back. So I need to write that time down. 1430. But yeah, the Megazord. Like I said, the Megaz- like I was saying a minute ago, the Megazord's cool. Um, it's all about the nostalgia for me with that. Uh, mm-hmm. Like all these Power Rangers over the years that have been happening, different generations of Power Rangers, 
and different styles of Power Rangers, like the car, the space, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Well, yeah, and so they all created like, Megazord. Yeah, yeah so, like I said, it, it's iconic, right? As a vehicle weapon of mass destruction. I don't know about mass destruction. We'll talk about What do that you later. mean? They destroyed we'll, cities. We'll talk about that later. If they were to turn on the, the people, the human beings, the Megazord would be a now yeah, it would be a problem. <laughs> be a problem. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, that's my number four. All right. So number three. Number three was a little bit more difficult for me. I went looking for this one. I was trying to find something that I wasn't going to shoot the pooch on. You know what I mean? Um, so I went and uh, pretty much said screw it and went with the shield helicarrier i was debating on putting the helicarrier in there but i don't know i forgot i don't know what what held me back because i would have made the argument because i was i was kind of making the argument with myself and i'm i'm just gonna say it is a vehicle um but the mm-hmm. helicarrier is more on the lines of like what we were saying the death star was last year or last week where we were saying the Death Star was uh, like a station. That's what Hell Carrier is. It's, it's more along the lines of a station than a vehicle. Because, I don't know about that. But it does transport people. It yeah. It's like drivable, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's powered by like some of the most intelligent people on the face of the planet. And it's like, it's if that scene in Avengers wasn't enough to make you love that. I, I don't know what does. So, but yeah, the Hel- Helicarrier is a really, really, really good one, honestly. Uh, yeah, only based on because it's iconic, it's like one of the more um, popular modern day spaceships. I feel like that now everybody puts with Marvel. Uh, if you are if you're reading comics, obviously, you all already knew about the Helicarrier with Shield and stuff, but. Seeing it on the on the in several Marvel movies. How many Marvel movies did we see the damn? Probably about three. <laughs> exactly. We've seen it several times. Yeah. So the fact that it shows up in in TV shows too. So it's the fact that it showed up and it says itself how popular the Hell Carry is. But that's a good one. Yeah, I, I I liked it. Um, I think that it's got a good purpose it's mm-hmm. got a good history behind it because it's in a bunch of comics mm-hmm. um it's also in the avengers movies that people are able to connect to it with pop culture mm-hmm. so yeah i think that was a good one yeah i like the helicarrier i don't like it as connected to the shield exclusively but yeah i i kind of wish that hydra had some of it that would be interesting to see what they would do with with access to a helicarrier. I don't know, honestly. But, um, Marvel leaves a lot of meat on the bone when it comes to the storytelling. So, your number three. My number three is pretty predictable. <laughs> This one, oh, I wouldn't say predictable. I wouldn't say predictable. It's a, it's the turtle van from Ninja Turtles. I, I knew it was going to be somewhere on here. I just didn't. <laughs> the turtle van from Ninja Turtles is arguably one of the most iconic vehicles. One I can argue. Of them. I, one of them. Like you said, arguably. Arguably, you're right. It's top five. It's top five. Well, it's top ten. I give it top ten. Top okay. ten. Top ten on you see it, you you put two and two together on what it is and where it's from. That's I, mean, what I mean, like I said, we're gonna talk about this top one hundred that they yeah. got. So yeah, recognizability. But uh, yeah, and then it, then, it, then it, what in the in the toy version? I know you they should shoot out fucking pieces, didn't it? Yep. Then it the, changed the toy. The toy version shot out. I don't think it was pizza. I like it. It was, it was, it was a manhole. The, it was a manhole. It was ma- manhole covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was dope. Then, like I said, then seeing the inside and how it's kind of all ghetto makeshift put together, and obviously looks like it was put together with scrap. Not that's 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 one of the, uh, the Michael Bay's version, but yep. in the cartoon version, it's even badasser. Where it was like 
that shell texture on top with you know the yellow and the green and it had all those extra gadgets with Don they had Donnie smart as hell and Donnie was crazy smart and that's the, the specific one I'm talking about is the animated series one from early or well, the late nineties. Because like I said, that one was iconic. The color scheme all the gadgets with the weird hands coming out the sides and stuff like that. I loved it. I remember like it it was created by a I think wasn't it created by Casey Jones? The Turtle Man? Yeah. I'm not sure in the In the comics? I think, I'm not sure. In the comics, I think it was created by Casey Jones and like it was like a peace offering to them because it was his hippie van. That he used to toke out of. I um, said <laughs> toke out. <laughs> but, like, I think that is kind of a cool van. Uh, at the same time, I don't put it that high. What? Um, the turtle van? Yeah. I, I, that's my brother's thing. I'm not a turtle fan. Um, but I, I do respect that it's an awesome van. Like, I used to play with it, my figures, when I was a kid, like G.I. Joe and that type of stuff. We all got in the turtle van. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a good one. The turtle van is my number three. All right, so number two, right? Yep. So number two, I could have gone with a several options here. Um, I've, I'm actually hung up between two. Uh, <laughs> I am. I'm hung up between two at number two. So I'm going to say one, and I'm going to keep one as my uh, honorable mention. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to say both of those right here. Mm. Okay. So my number two uh, is I am a long-running um, Ghostbusters fan. Nah. Ecto-1 is an amazing car. Uh, it looks like a damn hearse. Um, it and then the new the new movies. It got even better with the whole like the extending door to where it becomes a weapon. You know what I mean? Really? So yeah, I haven't seen the newest one. To be honest with the with kids, with yeah, the, it's with cool. The Paul, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. It's cool. You should watch that one. Mm -hmm. Um. But, like, the doors open and turn, and you can sit in the chair. And yeah. Use, use, like, the gun and stuff. The really? So it was kind of cool. Um, I think the, that's probably one of my favorite vehicles of all time, simply because, like, I grew up on that cartoon. Like, the yeah. before the movies, the cartoon, mm -hmm. uh, where there was a gorilla in the uh, firehouse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But like it was, it was a cool show back then, you know, and that was something I l admired and loved about uh, Ghostbusters was Ecto One. The Ecto One, that, that, that's, that's a really good one. The iconic uh, ghost on the side. Yeah, I I, I didn't watch. I I think the cartoon was a little before my time. Honestly. Oh yeah, it was way before your time. Yeah, I think that was like it was. Movie. It was like early '80s okay, to yeah, late that. '80s. I don't think it made it out of the '80s. That had to be like that Back to the Future. Um, what I, I wasn't there. I, I wasn't. I don't think I was around when Ace Ventura cartoon was out. And Back to the Future cartoon. Yeah. And those are those quiet, like made live action movies that became cartoons for a moment. Um, yeah, I mean that. that it got enough heat that it went. It became a movie with Bill Murray, so that's kind of mm -hmm. awesome. You ain't lying. That's crazy. It's crazy to think of. So the number two that I was gonna choose. Uh huh. Um, I am a huge fan of this nostalgic show as well. Show. Uh, it, it was it was a show back when I was a youngster. Um, oh. it's, I think it's still a show nowadays. I think they revamped it into a new show. Uh -huh. uh, Herbie. The Magic School Bus. Oh, I thought you were going to say Herbie. We love you. Like, this Frizzle and the Magic School Bus that used to change into everything, like, I wanted that bus. That, I wanted to be on that bus. That bus was iconic because it could do anything. It, it could. could do the space. It turned it could, into a cockroach. It could shrink you down. It 
Man, it it could, it could be anything. Literally, Miss Frizzle was on that crazy magic shit because she she can take you wherever the hell she wanted to take you just to teach you something. Oh yeah, and I loved every bit of it. Like I loved learning about atoms and germs and all that type of stuff by being shrunken to, on the magic school bus. Man, I think that's what's missing. If I, feel, I don't know, is magic school bus actually? I don't know. Is it is it actually gone ongoing right now? Is it what? Ongoing? Like, is it is it a series? They revamped it. Okay, I didn't know this. Yeah, they revamped it and made it brand new. And I, I'm not the fondest well, you of know, the new what one. Is, what but, is stream? You know, is it streaming on? Uh, Hulu. Hulu. Yeah. yeah. They That's revamped it, made it brand new, and try to like bring back the nostalgic form of it. And they've yeah. given it to the kids these days. And it's still going. I mean, it's still cool. It's just, it's not the same. You know. Mm. It, Nothing beats those old eighty cartoons with the like fuzz and stuff on the. Yeah, not to go on a weird tangent, but I, I feel the same. I only, only cartoon I feel like that successfully has has went and hasn't changed much was Arthur. Originally, Arthur. Yeah, yeah, Arthur it, was didn't, dope. it didn't change nothing. Like it was like, no, we growing up <laughs> with y'all. We ain't changing nothing. Everybody's staying the same. The animation ain't gonna upgrade. They normally series, you know how they do the revamp and try to upgrade your animation. Not with Arthur. <laughs> All right, what's your number two, sir? Uh, my number two is the Killer Clowns Safe. <laughs> okay. This thing arguably should could be my number one. This thing, just entering it and seeing how wacky and crazy it is. When you see them walk down that hall, and all you, you hear them—it looks like a top, a, a tent top. Yeah, it looks like it's a, it's a basically like a big tent. And that's what it looks like. The clown tent. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. yellow. It's yellow and red, and it has these. What, it looks like a top, honestly. Literally, I actually have one over there. I was running, but uh, it's kind of yeah. Cool. When you enter, and, and it's not even just the outside; it's the fact that it looks like a tent. Number one. When you get inside, it's even crazier because it looks like a fun house. You mm-hmm. enter, you know, you a circus the button, tent. Yeah, yeah. The buttons on the, to transport you, like make this weird sound. Then you go down to what, a cotton candy um, factory setup looking thing where there's cocoons and stuff hanging everywhere. Or you can go down this what the uh, uh with the the fire pole. And you look down and there's like a fucking animal ready to swallow you whole. I mean, <laughs> this, that tent was terrifying. It, it was, was. Like, it was like taking a fun house and making it the most creepiest stuff, but keeping the lightheartedness tone. Like you didn't know whether to be fucking terrified or be like, I want to go, but <laughs> but not freaking die. <laughs> I like I said, I've seen it once or twice, yeah. and like I was terrified when I first watched it as like a four-year-old because <laughs> it's a pretty old show yeah it's an iconic movie but like i said it's one of my favorite horror movies it might it, it is my favorite horror movie of all time. Like, like, but i is. think that like you said it's it's got like an iconic feel to it where yeah. it's the tent top and it's a horror icon and but it's not it's and it, and it comes off so welcoming and you're not scared but then it's so terrifying that the, the clowns have this this devious smile on their face and you actually get in and you're like shit <laughs> exactly it's like actually freaking it's like it's like a it's like a fun house mixed with the hot house all right that was your number two that's my number two all right i've got a shit ton of honorable mentions all right let me throw a couple of mines out here before you get to the word uh one honorable mention is uh the sand pod from uh dbz mm-hmm. the pods were you know they're white they're white they're like a little baseball uh with a maroon globe window on the front it's badass when i was young i used to always i was like just let me ride one of those with your arms folded and stuff and, and the, the pod pops up for the like it's badass yeah but that's one of my own mentions and uh Another I'll mention is the Creepers truck from uh, Jeepers Creepers. Uh, truck is freaking brutal. That, that thing terrifying. is terrifying. 
it's even scarier that if you even go near that thing, it will bat mobile your ass at a heartbeat. So, yeah, the creeper is another on we mentioned. This this car. That what you got? Uh, another one, last one uh, is the Power Rangers in space gliders. Uh, the gliders the Rangers used to ride on um, on. On land and in space, which was sick as hell. Even though they made no sense because when they had guests on top of the gliders and they were in space, they had no fucking helmet. It made no damn sense at all. <laughs> That's the one thing I would say. I, I it took you out. It took you out of the show when you you're watching two humans in space and one of them has a helmet. The yeah. other one's cheesing while <laughs> while running around the moon. It makes no damn sense. But anyways, yeah, the design. The concept of it, fucking sick. So I've got one. So one of mine is something that you would be a fan of. Mm -hmm. um, is the rat catcher from Darkwing Duck? Mm. The motorcycle with the sidecar. That's a good one. Uh, Ferris Bueller's uh, court or convertible. Mm -hmm. um, the DeLorean. I was waiting. I was, you know, I'm happy you said that because I was going to at the end after you're done. I was going to say I would not want to not name the DeLorean because it was it, really close. It may to be the, it may be one of the most iconic vehicles. It is really close to being my number one. Yeah, I thought um, that was going to be your number one, honestly. I thought so too. Uh, but like, here's another one that was really close to being my number one the Let's Thunder see. Tank from Thundercats. Okay, I didn't think that one. Like those two were really close to being my. There, number there's one, another. But... There's another one I want to guess, but I don't know if it's on your list. I mean, it might be your number one. It probably. It might. It might not be. It's probably not. Mine's from a novel. Okay. Okay. We're well, good then. Okay, I was gonna say uh, the Mystery Machine, Scooby Doo. Oh, I would yeah. be. I would be able yeah. to hate if I did not name drop that one because if anything, that may be dead serious, the most iconic vehicle in pop culture history. Uh, and also <laughs> yeah. the Jetsons mobile. You're right. Like the Jetsons cars was that what we were but, supposed but, to have by now? But I can't. Uh, I mean, and then we're going that case and go to the uh, the car from the Flintstones. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably then, one of the more I gotta go to do. And then my last one, my last honorable mention was Silver Surfer surfboard. Oh, that one's a good one. I didn't think of that one. Man, it, it's just like stuff like that's all iconic. A couple of them were gonna be my number one if I didn't have this favorite movie. Right. Um, and it's a part of a book series, or it's actually a book, classical book, but uh, it was in a movie and they made it look fucking sick. In 007. Uh, so <laughs> without further ado, my number one, I. There's a movie that nobody will say that is their favorite movie except for me, honestly, because it was a bad movie, but I was a fan of each and every story that was put into it. I'm curious now. Uh, so <laughs> one of my favorite movies growing up was A League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Really? Yeah. With Sean Connery uh -huh. and all the people, like, I don't think Johnny Depp was in it, but they got somebody that looked like Johnny oh, Depp yeah, to play yeah, Dorian yeah. He Gray. Did. He did look like that. He did look like that. But the guy that they got to play Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde, was sick. That was that was an awesome one. Um, the effects, like, the effects on that whole movie is underrated to me. Like, I don't know, people hate that movie. I actually don't mind I that movie. Fucking love that movie. I don't see why people hate on that movie. I know it wasn't like the greatest quality movie. Uh, but it was what, what the characters that were, I mean, the tone was perfect. The action was perfect to me. I don't know. I think that movie gets a lot of unwanted hate to me. Because you had, like, Mina Harker was on it, which was played by Peter Wilson. Then you had Tom Sawyer. Mm -hmm. And, like, Tom Sawyer was a descendant or was trying to learn how to shoot from uh, Quartermaster. Mm -hmm. Man, it was a, just a really cool movie. Like, I loved every bit of it because it threw all the classical books into it. So what, was, what was the, the vehicle name? The vehicle uh -huh. was Captain Nemo's Nautilus. What, the, what it, okay. the, the giant ship mm -hmm. that, like, took them 10,000 leagues under the sea. 
Mm. And like the in the movies, they made it look freaking beautiful and yeah. sick, and it like had the golden inlay and the on the white background. Yeah. But at the same time, it was like in the books they made it beautiful, just like they did in the movie. And like they described it, and that was like the, one of the first books I ever read was Ten Thousand Leagues Under the Sea," and it was like they made it to where it made me think of that image that I had as a kid. So the Nautilus from uh, Ten Thousand Leagues Under the Sea" and "The Extraordinary Gentleman" is my number one. That's a good one. That's a really good one. I can't it's even... not like everybody's fan favorite. Everybody's like, oh, no, this is me. This is, this is what I do. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of where I'm going to go. Mine isn't uh, everybody's fan favorite. I mean, I don't know. Mine, nobody would probably even be like, oh, yeah, that's what I would put on my list. <laughs> but, yeah, you you went hardcore to the, to the chest on that one. Oh, yeah. That's good. All right, what you got for number one? Well, my number one is my favorite thing slash ship of all time. The design, everything. It's to no surprise. It's part of my favorite franchise of all time. It's not the gu- it, Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not the gummy ship? <laughs> it's not the gummy ship, everyone. It's not the gummy ship. You we know- did it. We, we went through a whole episode without Kingdom Hearts. Hey, it was close. It was close. The gummy ship almost made it on my list list, and I didn't even mention an honorable mention because maybe in the future we'll have a spaceship list. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, my number one is the Liberty One from Planet of the Apes. I kind of seen that one. Coming, this ship yeah. is one. Sec- give me one sec. Give me one sec. It's it's pretty. It's gorgeous. <laughs> this ship. <laughs> He's actually got the damn ship. Yes, bro. This is my ship, bro. This ship is iconic. The fact that it took them to different dimensions slash timelines, and still, when it was crashed, the apes put that bad thing back together and used it again to get out of there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. isn't that the only Planet of the Apes that had the Icarus or the Liberty one? No. Escape. The, uh, well, the... I'm talking about the old versions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, those, they didn't do that in, like, the Paul Giamatti one or oh, the no. No. James Franco one. They had names for them, but they were never the, uh, the, the Icarus. Right. But, yes. well, this thing, like I said, iconic look, the white, gold tip, the red and the blue lines on it with the American flag and the ANSA symbol on it. Yeah, bro, this thing is... Iconic. It was an American spaceship. Literally. It's iconic. It's my favorite ship of all time. It's not even close. It's called the Icarus, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, the Liberty, Liberty one it was... Um, they, they look very, very similar. One of them appears in the TV series, and the other one appears in the movie. Yep. That's cool, man. I, I think that's that's a good choice. Um, like you said, it's something that you've had a long-lasting love for, Planet of the Apes, and Icarus was like a key part to that beat first series exactly it was uh, if anything it was arguably the most important part i mean it's what set up the whole plot run of the movie oh yeah uh i think that i mean it's dope i like the look of it it's kind of sleek and it kind of looks like an arrowhead type yeah it Um, it looks like an arrowhead so yeah i like that one so that was our top five uh any surprises there I was surprised that you didn't have the DeLorean as your one of your top three. To be honest with you, I was really, I was really betting on you to have the DeLorean as one of your top three. I thought about it honestly for a long time, that, and I was like between that one and the Magic School Bus. Honestly, and, and another one that I'm surprised that you didn't say, 
I'm severely surprised was the Millennium Falcon. I thought oh, I didn't think about I that. thought you would have made a point to put that in your top three. Like, but here's the thing with that. Yeah, go ahead. Han and Chewie weren't my favorite characters in Star Wars. They don't have to be. Arguably, I know, but that that's that's their story, and it was kind of tainted by them. But arguably, the Millennium Falcon was a character of its own. It was. I mean, Ray, Ray, and Finn piloted it. I mean, so it wasn't just a Han and Chewie thing. I agree. And arguably, Han- and arguably, the Millennium Falcon is one of the more popular space vehicles of all, of all time. time. Not even yeah. close. Like it, it's it's definitely up there as one of the most vehicles biggest vehicles of all movies and, and it may be the most popular to be honest like beloved between everybody like it's like it's like a hall of fame vehicle oh yeah it's like look who flew it that's you got harrison movie. ford <laughs> daisy <laughs> ridley <laughs> billy d williams john boyega uh childish gambino i was just about to say that <laughs> i mean shit man it's got a celebrity list that, Come on, that it, actually pilots. Like I said, it was so big that they made a, a, a ride at Disney about yeah. for it. Like, come on now. Like, that was that was kind of dope. I was also thinking the ATAT, just because yeah. how uh, how iconic that I, it is. is. Absolutely, that's a good one. Good. That's a really, 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 really good one, actually. But like at I, the same time, I I say Star Wars with almost everything that we do. Uh-huh. So I tried not to do that because, like, it gets it gets monotonous, you know. Like every why time think, we say the do, same thing. Why do you think I didn't put the gummy ship on my list? <laughs> but I'm, but if I'm being honest, I'm surprised. Um, well, I feel like if Zeus was a uh, on, he would have probably put Mario Kart or well, Mario's cart from Mario Kart on his list. I have no internet. There we go. Yeah, you do. <laughs> it's my internet that's messing up, and I'm trying to figure out why because nobody else should be on it. But uh, yeah, I was saying um, we have storms su- coming in, don't we? Yeah, I was surprised um, that. Well, if Zeus was on, I believe that he would have put Mar- he would have put Mario's cart from Mario Kart on. <laughs> I think he would have put the Star Fox on his, his oh, Star absolutely. Fox oh, ship. Oh, that was a given. To me, that was a given. For, was, I, I'm, I'm I think that would be his number one. Uh, yeah. Um, then I'm, then I'm, we'll ask him next I'm, week. Yeah. For sure. We'll ask him next week what his number one was. And I, You want to make a bet that it was a Star Fox? I think he'll prove, I think he'll make a point not to put it as number one. I mean. I'll say it's number one and you say it's not. All right, all right. I'll, I'll say I'll say it's number two. He's gonna I he's gonna throw one. he's gonna throw a deep cut at number one. He's gonna what? He's gonna throw a deep cut in at number one. Like it's gonna oh, be yeah. something that we both can't that we didn't think of. <laughs> Samurai shampoo or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I said. It's gonna be some some a, a deep cut from something that he like. All right. No, but that's uh, that's what we got, man. I mean, let's. I wanted to go over this. There's a a hundred iconic vehicles, and they did one to a hundred. And I want to see what your thoughts were. I sent you this list, and it's from visually. Uh, and I will have like if you're watching online, I will have this link in the YouTube description. You can check it out. Um, but I want to see what your thoughts are. Uh, do you you've had a minute to look over the list, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what are some things that stand out for you that should be addressed? Like for I, me, number one oh, is no. not, should not be the mystery machine. Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm not gonna say that. I was just gonna say, honestly, this list didn't do anything to prove exactly what I was saying a second ago. The Mystery Machine is arguably the most iconic vehicle of all time because you can easily, from a distance, you recognize the colors. You know what it is from a far distance. Most things on this list, if you look at it from a distance, it just looks like a vehicle. Like, color scheme-wise, unless you're looking at, like, the DeLorean or fucking Yoshi, 
or Megazord. <laughs> Yoshi's well, a fucking vehicle. Or or Mario Kart. You know what I mean? You're not really gonna you're not gonna notice those from a huge distance away. But that's Mystery what I'm saying. Machine, they got like fucking like number twenty three. They got uh, the National Lampoon station wagon ahead of the Batmobile from the animated series. See, that's crazy. That's but, it's insane to me. Like, what's number eight? Number eight is uh, Gar- the, the Milano from Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians dude. of the Galaxy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. I love Guardians of the Galaxy. But the fact that they put that in top ten, you are it's, grabbing it, that. Yeah, because that's not a, what that's about, bro. I mean, yes, they use the Guardians of the, the Milano in the Guardians of the Galaxy, but it's not the main point of view. You know what I mean? Iconic. Like, like, the, like the... The DeLorean is arguably one of the most famous vehicles of all time. And how and where is it at? 11. 11? That's horrible. Like, how is the Milano from Guardians of the Galaxy 8 in the DeLorean is 11? <laughs> you spit on the DeLorean. <laughs> Honestly, the DeLorean has... I mean, people were buying the DeLorean back then just because of the movie. Well, let's talk about this one. They got, uh, what is that? Supernatural's car mm-hmm. ahead of the Megazord. <sighs> That's crazy. And like I said, stuff that you can notice from a distance and you don't have to like kind of look at are the craziest things to put above like the Megazord, something that, or even like the fact that the, uh, the Ghostbusters vehicle 61. Like, what the hell? Right. Like, 61? Got, it's kind of crazy, man. Like, I see my Nautilus is on there at 47. Now, <laughs> the Shagmobile is up there at 55. How is the Shagmobile above the X? And Herbie fully loaded at 60. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. Oh, shit. And then you got, like, uh, the Beverly Hillbillies is above Darkwing Duck and all that type of stuff. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah, bro, this list. Is I mean, it, I, it is all about the point of view and point of interest and who's reading this, who's putting it out there. How is the boat from SpongeBob above the X? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even have a name. The Let boat me... from SpongeBob. Let me see. Jesus. The boat mobile from SpongeBob? Are you kidding me? That's more but okay. at the same time, like some of the shit, like they have the Wayne's World car on here, and that shouldn't even be in the top hundred. The fact that they have the Dumb and Dumber vehicle up here and it's number four <laughs> is pretty. Fucking I was, weird. That's what I was like. That's kind of like a slap in the face to like the wiener mobile <laughs> bro there is no way in the hell that vehicle should be up there at number four that's crazy i mean i see number six i could see number six being there for a reason hey it's funny how the party wagon is number three and that that was on top five i was top five in my list and you were talking shit about it i was talking shit about it but number six is grease lightning uh and it's a it's ahead of quite a big cast like Bro, that, that looks Rider. like a regular car. Like, come on now. Yeah, but it's still Grease Lightning can fly like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, man. It's more, uh, so it's more recognizable than oh, the yeah. Batmobile? To some people, yeah. Or how about Mario Kart? I don't think Mario Kart's that noticeable. What? I don't think it is. What, I about, think... what about the car from Jurassic Park? Huh? The car from Jurassic Park. Yeah, where's that one? Forty-three. E. What is, is it? the fact that the Shag Mobile is fifty-five and Ecto One is sixty-one is throwing me off now. It it hurts. And look at sixty-seven. Herbie, dude, Herbie the Love it. Bug is sixty-seven. Man, this is like a. This is a list. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of sad by this list. Yeah, I don't like this list. <laughs> I don't either. Like we could re- we could do this all over again, but but we'll we'll get back to that. We might put something on our website if you guys go check out it. 
Hello nerds.com triple L triple O because there's three of us normally. Normally, um, if you want to, if you want to go check out that, we might have our own list on there. Um, we might just make up one and just put put my, our stuff down. Uh, but yeah, I don't really agree with a lot of this list. Uh, let me ask you this question. Yeah. Uh, who would win in a battle, the Millennium Falcon or the Enterprise? Millennium Falcon, it ain't close. Would it? The Enterprise has shields. I'm going to say this. I'm biased. I'm going to show my bias right now. The, the Enterprise, every time I've seen it, it's getting attacked. That's true. <laughs> it is getting attacked. But at the same time, it survives every attack and it comes out on top. And like, the, like Chris, and the, Chris Hemsworth couldn't even save the Enterprise. <laughs> Chris Pine. Uh, yeah, no, but, Chris Hemsworth with his father, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're right, you're right. But, like, I see it does go into battle every time you see it, and it's always surviving the, those battles. But, like, and I, and one I'll, asteroid field will take yeah. out the Millennium Falcon. I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't know what weapon capabilities the Enterprise has. Photon torpedoes, uh, lasers, and well, all yeah, different Inter- types of shit. Enterprise sound like it's whooping the million thousand of ass from the from the, from the out from being out on the outside. <laughs> all right, who wins in a race? Okay. Fast and the Furious. I'm looking at. I'm just looking at this list. Mm-hmm. Fast and the Furious, the Dodge uh, John Turrito. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The General Lee from uh, Dukes of Hazard, mm-hmm. uh, or Christine. I'm gonna go Christine because I think she, I think she would get rid of the other ones some way. I think somehow. she would t- crash into. Yeah, one, yeah. yeah, she would be killing. And then them. she'd repair herself. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So I think she would I, I instantly win that that race. I think she. I mean. She'd have to catch them first. You think she wouldn't do no crazy shit to have something set up? <laughs> Maybe. She not she not playing fair. Come on now, you know her. All right, we have we got to do this. I'm okay. sorry. Bumblebee. Mm-hmm. Or uh. Okay, so it's a triple threat. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Bumblebee, mm-hmm. Voltron, okay, and the Megazord. Number one, without being biased. Okay, I'm about to be straight up. Number one, they squished Bumblebee. Bumblebee's too damn small. He's out of there. He's out of there. No way in hell. Yes, he is. Bumblebee's gone. Bumblebee what the hell? has advanced weaponry. He's tiny as shit compared to the Megazord and Voltron. He may be tiny, but he can pack a wallop. Anyways, Bumblebee gets his ass stomped. Uh, Voltron gets his ass whopped, 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 whopped. Come on now, Voltron. Volt- man, don't give me. Don't even start on Voltron. MMPR's Megazord would tear Voltron a new one. Let him pull out that Master Sword. <laughs> I still say Bumblebee takes this one because he'll call the other Transformers. Well, what the hell did little they gonna do? What they gonna do? Give the Megazord, please? Really? They're tiny. They're not that tiny compared to the Megazord. Yeah, they are. About the same size as they. No, Megazord. they're not. They're not close. The Megazord towers over buildings. Optimus Prime doesn't tower over any buildings. All right. Would you rather yeah. be seen driving around? In the Wienermobile, mm-hmm. the Dumb and Dumber Dog, yeah, or the Good Burger. The Dumb and Dumber, which one would the, you du- want, the Dumb and Dumber which Dog. Which one would you want? Okay, which one would you want for an all the time ride? I will okay, the Wienermobile. I'm not driving that. <laughs> <laughs> It's, Why not? You get free hot dogs. 
But it looks like it'd be too difficult to navigate and park and so oh, yeah. it's so damn long. The big burger, absolutely not. The big burger? Yeah. So I would go <laughs> I would go with the dog car, the dog car. Because it looked like it would be comfortable to sleep in me. It looks like it'd be comfortable to sleep on. <laughs> but the, the the scary thing is it looked like when it if it rained, it would stink so bad. Like it does. Like, Wet dog. Yeah, you would just be like, bruh, you need to bathe this fucking car. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd probably do um <laughs> Damn. That's a, I'd probably do the good burger. Yeah? Yeah. Like I ain't. I don't mind riding with an with a hamburger on the front of my car. Everybody called me a fat ass already. Really? So, you have a hamburger, a big ass hamburger with wheels on it. Uh, yeah, I don't mind. I mean, I've driven worse. <laughs> Than a hamburger? Yeah, I've driven some horrible cars, bro. Oh, so you drew? A you remember my Dodge with that had the profanity scratched into the door that I had to buff out? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, okay. Your daughter wasn't wouldn't want to get handed down a burger mobile. Like what the hell? All right, out of let's talk about flying stations. Mm-hmm. You got the blackjack from Final Fantasy VI. Okay. You got the Normandy ESR from Mass Effect Two. Mm-hmm. You've got the R Wing from Star Fox or the Shield Helicarrier. Which one would you rather be chilling on for, like, have your living quarters there? The Mass Effect ship. Really? Yes. I'm. Uh, why, why the Mass Effect ship? I was just about to say it. I feel like if something was to go down, some war shit or something go down, I feel like the Mass Effect ship would be probably the most capable one to defend itself. I've only played Mass Effect once or twice, and I know that it's a huge ship. Yeah. Um, I think I would probably be the Blackjack, because I love that in Final Fantasy VI where I could get on deck and just go around and chill in my deck quarters and that type of stuff. Like a pirate ship in the air that had casino. That was yeah, awesome. That is pretty sick. I ain't gonna lie. The concept of that sounds sick. All flown by Sid. Last Sid. one. Sid. Who wins in a triple threat? You got Christine. Mm-hmm. Bumblebee. And Herbie. And Herbie. Bumblebee destroys everybody. Bumblebee destroys Herbie. But he can't come out of car form. Oh, yeah? He can't come out of car form. Christine wins this, I think. I think so. Yeah. I think Herbie's innovative, bro. What? Yeah. Christine is literally a killing machine. Herbie's pretty innovative for what he's got. Like, he can do some stuff. Um, Herbie feels like it's like a 12 year old in a car form. What what if I add Lightning Queen to that mix? Ooh, Lightning Lightning kills everybody. I'm not close. Oh yeah, I don't know. I still say Herbie over Lightning McQueen. Yeah, who is in a race, Herbie or Lightning? Ooh, <laughs> I mean it's not really Herbie, fair. Herbie, Light, hey, Lightning, Herbie, Lightning or Speed Racer? Ah, uh, the mock ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> Probably Speed Racer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that one would win. <laughs> that's right. So, that's our show today. Uh, if you guys have liked what you see, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you're listening to our podcast, hit that follow button. All of these are free, and it costs you nothing, but it means so much to us. Uh, check us out on. On hellonerds.com, you can see all of our podcasts and YouTubes in that form. That's um, uh, also hellonerds.com. Triple L, triple O. Because there's only three of us. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna excold Jesus later on. Uh, but 
I also wanted to uh, shout out Jesus because he, you got you and Jesus because you guys take this on, came on, and we've been having so much fun doing these. I I look forward to doing these honestly. Yeah, like it's they're fun. Away. Sometimes uh, you need to get away to talk some nerdy stuff with your nerdy ass friends. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And you see all the stuff that I picked up at the Comic Con. You got the Sith Lords, and then back there you got Tim Burton. I don't think. Yeah. He's yeah, I was I was supposed to go get my frame today uh, for my uh, Power Rangers poster that got signed by Austin St. John. And, and we had a we had a Comic Con come to Oklahoma uh, mm-hmm. just last week, yeah. last last weekend, and we both went on separate days. Um, we need to we'll communicate more and go on the same day next time. <laughs> you ain't but. Awesome. but I appreciate everybody listening. I appreciate everybody watching. I thank you guys for coming in and checking us out. Go to check out us out on hellonerds.com, triple L, triple O. Shop for you while you support us. Hit the like and subscribe button. It's free for you, and it we great, greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. But until next time, I want to say peace out. Peace out.